Culture is a widening of the spirit and the mind. Starting September 5th, a multi-station exhibition featuring the cultural heritage of Europe is open to the public in Beijing. Laying out 38 cultural routes across the continent and beyond, it is a panorama of history, economy, art, and way of life. Co-organized by the EU delegation to China and EU National Institutes for Culture, the exhibition presents artwork, pictures, documents, and audiovisual content. After the opening ceremony, China Daily talked with the European Union's ambassador to China and the directors of the Goethe Institute China and Danish Cultural Center. To learn about the value of cultural diversity and how it strengthens people's ancestral roots. The cultural roots of Europe they have been chosen by the Council of Europe. So they, they are, I think, they are an offer to to get to know about Europe. I think it's not you have to do this route or you have to do that route. But if you want to go to Europe and if you want to explore Europe, this might give you a first guide. And it's not that you have to do all these routes from start to the end, but you can choose and you can combine them. Among all the 38 routes, which would you personally recommend to Chinese tourists? Oh, that's really, really hard to say. <laughs> I would probably go along the route of wine, <laughs> but but it's, it's, it's a personal passion. Right? Yeah, it's a personal oh. passion. But um, I I would actually do like Europeans do combine. Different aspects, or do parts of these routes、uh, when you go to one place, and just to also to understand. I mean, they help you even if you don't make a whole route. You will still understand how one tradition has been linked to the other. In some way, you can also do a cultural route through Beijing, discovering these European cultural centers. That is also an idea that is behind、uh, this exhibition. I was looking through the 38 routes. It requires a certain amount of knowledge for、uh, a visitor to understand and appreciate that kind of culture. How to make these、um, cultural routes appealing and relatable to Chinese visitors? Yes, it requires a lot of studying, self-studying. You might say, just as when I go to the Chinese Buddhist site. Outside of Beijing, I have to start to look for what is the local traits of the very same Buddhistic tradition that I know from Beijing. What is the local trait here in Anhui or in Gansu? So, culture is not just entertainment or、uh, a layer you put on top of things. It actually requires that you. Co-author, or you, you participate. We are living in a world with endless, like the next new things. How can cultural heritage gain a certain level of appeal to、um, contemporary public? I think、uh, one of the fundamental differences between the European approach to cultural heritage and the Chinese is the way that. European philosophy has harbored that changes in cultural heritage doesn't weakness the value of the heritage. So you you can actually incorporate contemporary elements because the let's call it the basic spirit or the basic building is still there, and that's the one. We cherish, but we also cherish that you can read history in it, and say, "Oh, this is thousand years old, but oh, this is five hundred years. This is fifty years." But you you have it, so it's it's this linear reading of history, which I think is、uh, something important. And I think if we can introduce this perception or this optic to young generations. They they will also start to see themselves as part of that cultural tradition and heritage.
China is now uh, attaching great importance on protecting cultural heritage. And actually, the first cultural route of Europe dates back to 1987. So after decades of experiment and development, what are the valuable lessons you think uh, you can share with Chinese cultural institutions on heritage promotion and preservation? So the lessons is that I think my, the way I see it is that heritage is part of history. One should never forget history. And the more money the governments across the world can allocate to protection of the heritage is a very good thing. And in fact, in China, a lot of beautiful sites, uh, Mingshan Wuti, uh, in fact, are not original sites. They had been destroyed many times in history, but they have always been rebuilt. And that shows how much the Chinese are, I think, attached to the heritage. It doesn't really matter whether it is the original, you know. I was uh, last uh, uh, December, I went to Wuhan, it was just before the pandemic, and uh, a Chinese friend of mine had invited me to visit Chibi. Uh, and, I, you know, as I was learning Chinese, uh, 50 years ago, 40 years ago. For me, it was a magical sight, you know. The Red Cliff, where Cao Cao and, uh, failed, you know, uh, in his battle. And, uh, and so I was, you know, preparing myself to, uh, with Sudongbo writing, to look at Chibi. But today, Chibi is inland. <laughs> it's not at all on the river. And, but it doesn't matter because there's a temple uh, from the Song Dynasty. Uh, and people like to go there even if it is not the Chibi of your mind. You recreate it. So, I think it is important that uh, local governments and national governments take care about these historical sites. Yes. And in your opening speech, you mentioned the unique tie between education and also travel. So do you think it's something deeply rooted in both European and Chinese cultures? Oh, yes. I think it is... Uh, In both cultures, European and Chinese, the place where you are born, Kuxia, is extremely important because it makes you what you are. But to become an adult, a world citizen, you need to go out from your, the place where you were born. You need to go elsewhere. Tasia. And the question, of course, of travel is a, is, is a question of discovery of what you are. How do you adapt to new places? What kind of dialogue would you have with people that are different? Confucius, Konze, left his Guxia in the country of Lu, and went from state to state to try to propagate his ideas. And when he was doing that, he discovered what he was himself. So there is no growth. In Chinese, you would say, Xioya or Shenya. There's no personal growth without travel. And in a globalized world, it's even more important. People say, you know, all the time, 
especially in China, you know, uh, sovereignty. We are China, the China dream. But what is important, apart from that, is China and the world. And so all the Chinese who travel today to Europe, to the Americas, to Asia, they are on a path of discovery. And they understand that when they are abroad, away, elsewhere, that's where they discover that they are not only from Xi'an, Beijing, or Tianjin, they are from China. <laughs>